Welcome to the Not Playing Podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by... Just Patrick Carey. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> uh, you can contact us on email at notplayingpodcast.gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. So, um, yeah, so you, um, even though we don't have the new headsets, hmm. uh, the store, like you, like you said, the store has been updated, and yeah. also a lot of the games are out now. Yes. So I know, I know you'd you'd had a little try on some of them. Do you want to yeah, talk about loads that? of them? So, uh, so Lucky's Tale. I've been playing Lucky's Tale. So which... that's the launch title, but you just bought it, did you? No, it just it's just unlocked in the in the store. Oh, and yeah, so you can play yeah. it because you've got the yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously. I've had a, like Oculus Camp for ages, so um, yeah. So the um, yeah, so it's uh, it's really cool, really kind of cartoony. Very, it's got a real kind of nostalgic '90s vibe to it. Um, all those kind of Mario sort of that, those kind of cutesy, colourful, brightly coloured fantasy worlds. It's that's it. That's its vibe. Yeah, it looks um, like the first Mario 3D. It's got that kind of perspective, hasn't it? Where you're like looking down a bit. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, you're looking down and you're controlling this little character. Uh, and it's kind of cool. It's, it's a fun platformer. It's, um, it feels good. The camera, the camera movement's obviously well prototyped and it's very comfortable. It doesn't make you feel uncomfortable, even though it's kind of first person moving around. Yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, it is what it is. It's a, it's a fun kind of platformer. It's, not the kind of game I'm normally into. It's not the kind of game I'd bother playing in 2D, uh, to be fair. Um, it's uh, quite a bit more challenging than you might think looking at it. It looks like kind of real cutesy kids game, but it's actually pretty hard. But not in a way that's particularly rewarding, I, I found. Uh, um, so like it, It's one of those games where you have to kind of unlock you have to kind of earn coins to unlock later levels uh, oh, right. and unfortunately the way it's designed you have to redo previous levels on time trials and collect the coin versions to do that sometimes um and yeah i didn't really enjoy that i don't enjoy being made to play previous levels in a story story mode of a game to progress the story mode i don't it didn't, it's grinding I, I, that's grinding i don't i don't grind in anything, let alone platformers. No, neither so, do I, man. So, no, I wasn't a fan of that. Um, but, but you, like I say, it is what it was. And I thought, I thought the the kind of thing that the title um, achieved doing was it showed that even though it didn't really necessarily need to be in, in VR almost at all, the only thing that really was used, like, was the used head tracking to fire some of the projectile weapons in in sort so of small instances of the game doesn't happen very right. often, but you you basically look at targets and fire as you and, he, and he'll throw oh, okay. like he'll throw like a little bomb or something. I was um, about to I was about to ask you if any of the difficulty was on account of the fact it's in VR. No, not at all. No, no, no. it's just it's just to the way a bit it's twitchy. Designed. Yeah, but um, yeah. I, I, other than that, you know, it doesn't. Re- it it could be a two D platform. Well, it could be a, you know, a normal 2D platformer. So, um, I thought what was interesting though is it kind of demonstrated how even games that don't need to be in VR can be enjoyed in, in VR. Right. Um, because it does bring something to it in the fact that you can like look around this world now. It's, and also the game obviously knows when you're looking directly at the main character and the main character will turn around and it'll look at you as if you're there. And that's, that's a new thing. That's a thing that, you can't get with a with a screen game like that. So, yeah, it, do you know what I mean? It was it was kind of interesting that it kind of demonstrates what a what a, a standard game can benefit from in being v- in VR. Well, like you said about Project Cars, you were saying, oh, you have to get it, and I and I, I'm like, I probably will because, you know, whenever I've 
I know it's different, but whenever I've bought like a new console, I've always like, yeah, I'll get a driving game. Sometimes I've even fucking got a golf game, believe it or not, <laughs> just because I'm like, I wonder what golf games look like now. Um, and yeah, like this is the same sort of thing. I, of course, I'm going to want things that like uh, demonstrate the strengths of the platform. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I probably will take a punt on Project Cars, I reckon. Yeah, so P- Project Cars. I bit, I bit, I played about 45 hours in that game. I love that game. So what um, have they have they done anything? Have they launched a new version of it? Oh then, yes, it? yeah. Like it's just like the, the they basically um, re-update uh, updated it with the 1.3 runtime, the Oculus runtime, uh, right. which has uh, as, uh, asymmetric time warp, which makes a huge difference on performance. So basically, to explain what that what that what that means, even if the game is running at lower than 90 frames per second right or, se- or 75 frames per second in my case because i'm running on a dk2 um your head tracking won't show that so you'll notice things moving in a slow frame rate on the screen but it won't turn into a horrible juddery smeary mess like it did on all of the run times before so it's a huge update uh, it's, it's one of carmack's Big, big deal. I was about to say, you did, it first on, you did it first on the Gear VR. It was a huge thing, and it was a huge thing <laughs> convincing everyone to let him let him take that. But it it made it made the difference. It made mobile work on VR. It oh. was, it was the, that was why he did it. He did it because he knew if he could make it work on mobile, then it would work on PC. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a massive deal, and it means that I'm now able to play that game with like nearly everything up, and awesome. that game is. Like one of the prettiest games. It's like the crisis of driving games, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's beautiful, like the lighting and, and the particle effects and stuff. It's gorgeous. Um, and so yeah, I've just been playing, playing that loads. Um, hence the steering wheel. In hence shop. the steering wheel, which is now a permanent <laughs> part of my. I've, I'm going to have to build a new desk because this is now how my my cockpit is permanently set up with a steering wheel and uh, Hotas joystick and, and, and well you won't here. need a desk soon no you'll no, be wonder, I'll wandering have a around desk you'll just have to remember not to put drinks on it you just have to draw around there. it in, in tilt <laughs> yeah. so you remember where it is <laughs> yeah i'll just have a load of those old decorators tables but i'll make them like look like um, different colors <laughs> yeah just make them look like whatever put it on the blue one yeah <laughs> <laughs> never bother decorating ever again just just put on a headset like, yeah like whatever no uh and so have you tried a valkyrie no, no, I haven't tried that yet. That's they're, they're sending out codes, I think, with their the headset or something. So. Oh, okay. Uh, but you did try Elite Dangerous. Yeah. Uh, again, it's got the one point three upgrade, and it's made a huge difference. Also, meaning I could nearly put everything up again, which I I, I had to put lots of stuff down previously to get it running smoothly all the time. Yeah. Because um, you get it running really nice out in space, and then you get back to the hangar, and it's a big juddery mess again so it was yeah but so not having to worry about that is amazing um and it, yeah it just looks gorgeous and I tr- i've been trying um close courses combat for the first time which is amazing it's yeah it's it, it's like these tiny little portions of star wars style battles like these intense laser high octane adrenaline fueled battles and it's amazing it's just so you I thought it was just racing. Are you actually shooting dudes in it as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just firing. For go- it's just deathmatch or team deathmatch or capture the flag. Oh, um, cool. Uh, I, I, I've i played a little bit of deathmatch, mainly just team deathmatch, though, where you're usually like kind of three against three or four against four, something like that. And you have these kind of um, um, kind of small environments. So you have like a space station or, you know, some kind of some large central object that you kind of focus around and then like there's ones that are like asteroid fields or it's it, yeah it's awesome it's awesome it's it's literally just a it, it's like it's like a star wars battle basically awesome. uh, and yeah in, in in vr it's just absolutely amazing uh, um because it's because obviously the resolution isn't great in the dk2 for, for like f- flight like um for like combat stuff it's I, I i i it's probably a little bit more of a challenge playing it in like that but it's it's like immensely more immersive obviously well it's, it'll be great on the new headset I oh imagine. it's gonna be like mate you you probably won't come out of that thing for months when you when you <laughs> play that you are gonna love that game that's the thing is like 
there's the two games that come with it, but then I've already got like probably the killer app. I've had it for months. Oh, you know, your like, killer app anyway, yeah. My my killer app, yeah. My my own killer app, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm to- totally up for that then. Oh, that that's cool. And I guess the CQC kind of sort of suits that kind of shorter play session as well like if you don't want to get involved in all the absolutely all the yeah and nuts it, and bolts it, and it lets you um it lets you try out other ships really quickly so if you want to know what the other ships feel like you once you've unlocked them you can you can try out other ships you can try out you can you know what's going to what it's like to to use other weapons very quickly because you very quickly up, up unlock other weapons without grinding for the money to buy them so it yeah it's definitely like a kind of yeah condensed version of, of, of elite and and and, and yeah it works really well in vr as well i think it's it's, it's a lot of fun of course the release of well but when i by the time i get my rift um no man's sky will be out so i yeah. hope the modders can get on the case with that as soon as <laughs> i think you should be i think you should be safe on that one because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure um i'm pretty sure vorpex will work for that cool this has been the Not Playing Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk where you can also hear myself and Ian talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast and Adam Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening on iTunes, please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye. My friend, I'm in blood to agree Cause I suck, you suck. I suck at Call of Duty I just wanted to say quickly uh, on the whole 3D TV thing. Um, I went round John's uh, mm-hmm. the other night um, to watch some catch up on some TV stuff. I watched the same Banshee stuff like that, and um, oh, and we watched an episode of Vikings as well. But mm-hmm. he's just bought a new projector because his one died. We wore it out watching season two of Daredevil, <laughs> right? And uh, so uh, he he got a 1080p 3D TV oh, cool. 3D projector. And my God, it, it it's got the it's with the pass uh, with the active glasses. Yeah, uh, and it, it makes works. a difference. Oh yeah, it God, makes yeah, such and, a also, difference. and also on that slightly smaller screen as well. Like I think that helps a bit. Uh, mm. But we put Avatar on, and I was thinking, ah, oh, yeah, try Avatar, mate. Like because he has never seen it. Yeah. I could, um, and I can't believe how well that film has aged. It still looks incredible. Yeah. But and it, because I think so many films since then have sort of abused 3d like they just put them into 3d yeah. and it's like the film hasn't really been designed for 3d yeah. so it's all just like gimmicky like yeah oh that's coming towards you yeah put that poke that out yeah but with with avatar like every shot of that film is oh, designed there were so many of like the 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 cool tricks for vr in that game so yeah. like some of the some of the things that really stood out in that film that made me go, ah, oh, the bits that were 3D that look best with these are the same things that look the best in VR. So like it's when it, when it goes out, when you, when you have uh, a surface underneath you and you go to a ledge like you did in the blue and you like walk to the edge of the ship and you look down, mm. like that's one of the coolest things that VR does. Like that, yeah. that feeling of vertigo when you look over something, that's one of its biggest tricks. Yeah, the particle effects when they when they bomb the uh, when they blow up the tree or whatever, it, and there's the, all the ash coming down. That's yeah. again one of the better kind of tricks of 3D. It's like it's giving you constant moving close quarters um, things to focus on, and it works great in 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 VR. It's why so many of my prototype things have snow or dust or you know stuff moving in the water any excuse i have to put those particle effects in it i'll put them in because it looks great you have this constant 3d objects all the way around you all the time rather than just an empty space yeah the bit i gone yeah the bit i watched of avatar was uh the bit where he's just kind of gone out into the wild on his own and there's all those big sort of dog things attacking him 
Oh yeah, yeah. And and as well as that, you've got all those sort of like little uh, like blossomy things floating about everywhere. Yeah. And then the fire, and he's waving the fire brand around. Yeah. And it's just and it's like wha- almost whacking you in the face. That's right. It's really really clever. Um, I wanted to look. I said put the beginning on because I love that depth. Uh, shot you know when they're in space yeah yeah that was like blow, blowing my mind when i watched it with you the first time and uh yeah i i said go to the beginning and there's like this whole massive like blade runner thing now like there's like an extended version i'd never seen right it's like it's like um the main character going around in a wheelchair in like this sort of neo futuristic city oh right so I've seen that. so um yeah i'm i'm gonna <laughs> I, well, I'm going to watch it round his again, I think, probably. Because mm. um, we just put it on. Just He was just demo, demoing it for me. Yeah. Uh, the other the other thing we watched was Dread, the new Dread movie. That's a really good 3D showcase. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that because, uh, yeah, 3D. Yeah, you should you should get into, uh, some, get into 3D gaming because, uh, especially if he's got an NVIDIA card, there's, there's a lot of um, titles which support proper 3d and that and it looks great things like the witcher look fucking amazing in 3d yeah well he's got amazing. his lounge set up he's got his he's got his pc in the lounge so, yeah, so uh, he, he could totally do it yeah he just doesn't ha- he just has an ati ati card unfortunately but maybe uh, I can you can s- still do 3d it's just uh, you i think you have to use a uh, try uh this is like an injector basically third party um, yeah stuff. yeah i think you can still do it cool 